In this video, we're going to see the role of vitrectomy in saving an eye with advanced traumatic and ophthalmitis. A 13-year-old boy presented with a 5 days old history of stick trauma to his right eye. On examination, his vision was perception of light present and projection of rays accurate. There was a self-sealed corneal tear with exudates completely filling the anterior chamber. The lens was cataractus with no fundus view. On the ultrasound exam, the vitreous was filled with exudates and the retina was attached. Based on the history and ocular examination, a diagnosis of advanced traumatic endophthalmitis was made and vitrectomy surgery with intraocular antibiotic steroid injection was planned. The case was started by suturing the cornea. Due to poor view, the infusion was placed in the anterior chamber and lensectomy was done. After lensectomy and anterior vitrectomy, the infusion was shifted posteriorly. This was followed by core vitrectomy to try and safely clear as much of the exudates as possible. Using the macular lens, the partially lifted posterior hyaloid was dissected. This was done on high cut rate and low suction settings. Care was taken to avoid any iatrogenic retinal injury. The cutter was strictly used in cutting only mode and was moved very slowly and steadily over the posterior hyaloid. It is important to mention here that the suction only mode was never used at any point while working on the vitreous. Eventually, with gradual and careful dissection, the entire posterior hyaloid was removed. Once the posterior hyaloid was removed, visibility of the underlying retina drastically improved. The underlying retina was extremely inflamed and necrotic, with exudates covering the posterior pole. Careful and limited peripheral vitrectomy was done, and the posterior pole exudates were left untouched. Intravitreal antibiotic steroid injections were given at the conclusion of surgery. The endophthalmitis infection responded very well and started resolving rapidly, but a giant retinal tear retinal detachment developed four days after vitrectomy. The patient was immediately taken up for re-surgery. After removing the residual exudates and vitreous, PFCL was used to flatten and settle the retina. A complete base shaving was done to remove all the remaining vitreous. The PFCL full fill was done before proceeding onto barrage laser. To secure the retina in place, three to four rows of 360 degrees endo laser was done. A direct PFCL silicone oil exchange was done to conclude the case. At six weeks follow-up, the child gained a best corrected vision of 6 by 36 with an attached retina and silicone oil in situ. The timely and appropriate intervention helped in saving this child's eye despite having a severe advanced traumatic endophthalmitis. Thanks for watching. Hope this experience and video were useful and can hopefully help spread awareness about the importance of timely and appropriate intervention in the case of endophthalmitis.